Dear friends, welcome to Born with RK Chemistry YouTube channel. In this video, I will explain structures of polynuclear metal carbonyls. The first one is Mn2CO10. Here we have two manganese atoms, and the electronic configuration of manganese is argon 3D5 4S2. So in d orbitals in s orbital we have seven electrons and the seven electrons will be filled in this manner. But in presence of CO ligands there is a rearrangement of uh, these seven electrons. This is the rearrangement of seven electrons 2, 2, 1, 2. You can find five empty orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 empty orbitals and one orbital filled with the single electron. These six orbitals will participate in D2 sp3 hybridization and there is a formation of uh, six D2 sp3 hybridized orbitals. You, you will get six D2 sp3 hybridized orbitals. Out of 6 D2 sp3 hybridized orbital, one has single electron, unpaid electron and the remaining 5 are empty orbitals. These 5 empty orbitals will be filled with uh, the electrons donated by the 5 CO ligands. So this is the electronic configuration of manganese in Mn2 CO10. These are the electrons, these two electrons and these two, these two electrons, uh, all these electrons comes from 5 CO ligands and you have one unpaid electron. This one unpaid electron will overlap with, uh, will paid with uh, another one unpaid electron in manganese 2. So there is a formation of manganese, manganese bond and each manganese is connected with uh, 5 CO ligands. So finally, you have 10 terminal CO's and uh, one metal metal bond in Mn2 CO10. The two units, if you take this unit, manganese 1 and uh, manganese 2, these two units are in staggered conformation. And since all the electrons are paid, if you take this one, this one, this one also paid due to manganese manganese bond. Since all the electrons are paid, the magnetic behavior of this uh, Mn2CO10 is diamagnetic. Let us take Fe2CO9. In this case, also you have two iron metal atoms. The electronic configuration of Fe is uh, argon 3D6 4S2. Okay, this is the electronic configuration 3D6, 4S2. In presence of CO ligands, there is no rearrangement of electrons and uh, there is a hybridization between uh, D orbitals, 2 D orbitals, 1 S orbital and 3 P orbitals. There is a D2 SP3 hybridization. There is a D2 SP3 hybridization. So you will get 6 D2 sp3 hybridized orbitals and uh, out of 6 D2 sp3 hybridized orbitals, 3 have unpaid electrons and the remaining 3 are empty orbitals. The 3 orbitals which have unpaid electrons will be filled with the CO ligand. Each CO ligand, the bridged CO ligands donate 1 electron to the each unpaid uh, orbital. So these electrons will be paid uh, by the bridged CO ligand and the remaining empty orbitals, three empty orbitals will be filled by terminal CO's. The terminal CO's donates two electrons. Bridged CO donates one electron, terminal CO donates two electrons. If you take second uh, iron atom, in this case also there is a D2 sp3 hybridization. You have three D2 sp3 hybridized orbitals with uh, unpaid electrons and three are empty. These three empty will be filled with three, CO three terminal CO ligands and uh, 
the three orbitals which are having unpaid electrons these will be filled by bridged COs three bridged COs so these three bridged COs donates single electron to the first iron atom and also second iron atom so finally you have three bridging bonds three bridged COs and six terminal COs in the case of Fe2C1i and here the unpaid electron there is a metal metal bond due to overlapping of d orbitals pure d orbitals not due to overlapping of uh, uh, hybridized orbitals so finally how many metal metal bonds are there the metal metal bond one and the terminal c was in this structure you have terminal c was six and the bridged c was you have uh, three bridged c was you have since all the electrons are paid all the electrons are paid in case of Fe1 and Fe2, all the electrons are paid. That's why the behavior is a diamagnetic behavior. Okay, this is the structure of uh, Fe2CO9. Here you can find three bridge ligands, CO ligands. And here you can find uh, three terminal on first Fe and three terminal on second Fe. Let us take the CO2CO8 structure, cobalt. It has two structures. One, one is bridged structure and the second one is non-bridged structure. In bridged structure, you have two CO ligands, two bridged CO ligands and three terminal CO ligands on each cobalt. So in this case, you have uh, uh, two bridged CO ligands and uh, six terminal CO ligands and there is a one metal metal bond there is a one one metal bond and in case of uh, non bridged structure there is no bridged CO's all are terminals so you have uh, eight uh, terminal CO's and there is a one metal metal bond okay, you can find bridged structure in solid state solid state there is a bridged structure and in solution also at low temperature at very low temperature you can find bridged structure but high temperature solution at temperature above atmospheric temperature the bridged structure will become non bridged structure okay, this is a non bridged structure and this is the bridged structure let us take the structure of co2 co8 the cobalt electronic configuration is 3d7 4s2 here uh, 3d7 4s2 yeah, there is no electron it's a 3d7 4s2 and uh, in presence of CO ligands there is a rearrangement of electrons one of the 4s electron enters into 3d and you will get 2 2 2 1 1 1 and 3 p empty orbitals here there is a d2 sp3 hybridization okay and you will get uh, D2 sp3 hybridized orbitals, the first three have unpaid electrons, and the next three are empty orbitals. The three empty orbitals will be filled by three terminal CO ligands and the two D2 sp3 hybridized orbitals with a single electron will be filled by bridged CO ligands, two bridged CO ligands. Each bridged CO ligand donates single electron. And the another one, this one is uh, filled by due to formation of cobalt, cobalt metal bond. In second case also, there is a formation of cobalt, cobalt metal bond and two bridged CO ligands and uh, three terminal CO ligands. Since all the electrons are paid it's a diamagnetic in nature let us take the second one this one is bridged structure bridged structure in bridged structure what is the hybridization d2 sp3 hybridization let us take the non-bridged structure in non-bridged structure the electronic configuration of cobalt in ground state is 3d7 4s2 here 4s2 this one here there is no electron 
and in presence of uh, CO ligands there is a rearrangement of electrons these two electrons will be paid and the one of the and these ele two electrons comes into the empty orbital so finally you have uh, 2 2 2 2 and 1 in this case also you have 2 2 2 1 one of the d orbitals has a unpaid electron and you can find the 4s is empty 3p orbitals are empty there is a dsp3 hybridization instead of d 2 sp3 here there is a dsp3 hybridization so you will get uh, 5 dsp3 hybridized orbitals one has a unpaid electron and the remaining 4 are empty orbitals. These 4 empty orbitals will be filled by 4 CO terminal CO ligands and uh, the unpaid electron will be paid due to formation of uh, cobalt cobalt metal bond. In this case also all the electrons are filled, all the electrons are paid. So this one is uh, diamagnetic. What is the difference between bridge structure and non bridge structure? In bridge structure, you have uh, two bridge CO ligands and uh, six terminal CO ligands. In case of non bridge, all the CO ligands are terminal CO ligands. In case of bridged, the hybridization is G2 sp3. In case of uh, non bridged, the hybridization is uh, D sp3. Let us take the structure of Fe3 CO12. In this case, we have three Fe metal atoms. These three are connected in a trigonal planar. The geometry of these three Fe is trigonal planar. And the first one, let us take this one. This one is connected with three terminal CO's. Here you have three terminal CO's and two bridged CO's. This one is one bridged CO. This one is one bridged CO and uh, this one is another bridged CO. So for this you have two bridged CO's. Let us take second one. Second one also three terminal CO's and two bridged CO's. Two bridged uh, CO's you have. In fourth one you have uh, only four uh, terminal CO's. And, uh, you have three metal metal bonds. There is a Fe, 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 Fe metal metal bonds. You have one, two, there is a metal metal bond, two, three, there is a metal metal bond, and one, three, there is a metal metal bond. You have three metal metal bonds. So, if you take the whole structure, how many terminal CVOs are there? The terminal CVOs are three, three, and these are four. Three, three, four means ten, and bridged CVOs only two. And metal metal bonds, uh, the metal metal bonds are 3. So this is the structure of uh, Fe3CO12. Let us summarize uh, the hybridization structure of uh, the metal carbonyl. Let us take the NaCO4, sp3 hybridization, tetrahedral, there is no metal metal bond, all CO's are terminal CO's, and there is no bridged CO. In case of uh, Mononuclear metal carbonyls, there is no bridged CO. FeCO5, DSP3 hybridization, trigonal bipyramidal, and there is no metal metal bond in uh, mononuclear and also bridged, no, no bridged CO, CO ligands. In this case, you have five terminal CrCO6, D2 sp3, octahedral, and you have uh, six terminal CO ligands. And uh, VCO6 also, D2 sp3, octahedral. 6 CO ligands. In case of Mn2 CO10, what is hybridization? D2 sp3 hybridization. You have one metal metal bond. All are terminal CO's. 10 terminal CO's. There is no in bridged CO. And Fe2 CO9, what is the hybridization? D2 sp3. And you have one metal metal bond. And 6 terminal CO's and uh, 3 bridged CO's. And if you take uh, CO2, CO8. It has two structures. One is the bridged structure. This is the bridged one, and this is the non-bridged structure. In bridged structure, what is the hybridization? D2SP3 
and non bridge to dsp3 one metal metal bond in each case one metal metal bond in case of bridged you have six uh, terminal coos and two bridged coos in case of non bridged you have eight terminal coos and zero bridged coos so this is about the structure of metal carbonides in coming video i will explain effective atomic number rule in metal carbonides thank you